Carmen Moulton has finally escaped her concrete tomb. Now outside the mansion, with the morning sun on her face, she finds herself to be warm in her samurai armor. Some layers might need to be adjusted, but as she gets herself more comfortable, her hands rest upon a pistol, a weapon found within the manor, a weapon that she would seek to use to end her target's life. She had to hope that he had not yet flown far from here. The airport is her destination today, and it's time to get underway. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, into our short survival series. We are with Carmen Moulton, and we are finally outside this manor, escaping in the last episode from down here, down by the pool. The one area of the building that wasn't as secure as the others, as we can see, a hammer was enough to get us through the door. Now, no doubt, there are still many goodies in this manor that we might be able to pick through, but Carmen's already spent so much time inside of here, over a week in actual fact, or at the very least five days. I'm not sure which, but today we have to travel from here all the way up towards this airport. Now, obviously, we do have a interesting refugee center all the way up here. And we also have these two toxic waste dumps between us and our destination. I think the very first thing that we're going to investigate today, though, is this field campsite down here. We might be able to get a little bit of extra food, water, and maybe even some firearms if they've been left behind. But that's a big if. For now, we are going to be sticking to this road. And I do want to check and see where our warmth is coming from. So obviously our torso and our arms they're quite warm right now, so let's have a look and see what we're dealing with here. So the Gambeson vest that we have on is going to be creating a fair amount of warmth for us. 50 warmth in actual fact. And it does keep us pretty safe, but we might have to take it off for now. Our armor already does some great protection. And it's even got a bit of warmth to it too. The utility vest is just useful. It's not providing much in the way of protection, but it allows us to carry more close at hand. So first things first. Let's take off that Gambeson vest. Sad as I am to do it, that will certainly help with our torso warmth. And now it looks like it's just going to be the arms and legs. And we might even have to take off our arming pants potentially. Well, we're definitely going to have to take off the Gambeson sleeves. So we will unequip those for the moment. And then for our legs, maybe we can get by with just removing the stockings. But the arming pants, yeah, that's a, that's a warmth of 50. Yeah, they're coming off. I just don't want us to be sweating a load here. And yeah, that's looking a lot better. We can always maybe consider putting them back on when we get to our destination. But for now, that is going to help. And of course, our torso encumbrance is <laughs> high at the moment. We are carrying a large number of items. So we're going to have to drop that hiking backpack off if we are going to try and fight. But yes, for now, we are just going to follow this road until we reach the field campsite. So we're going to make sure that we turn safe mode on just so that if anything appears, we'll be warned of it. it. Looks like we might maybe just have a wheel in the back of this vehicle. We'll climb into it. It's very damaged. There's a screwdriver set, but we'll definitely take that. Everything else is going to stay here though. Back outside Carmen. Let's continue down the road. We're seeing some giant aphids and a robin nearby. Nothing else. It is quiet out here. Another destroyed car. Nothing in it. We got a weasel <laughs> to our northwest. It's nice to see wildlife here. So far, no infected. Bats and hummingbirds. Okay, and now this is the point that we're going to want to turn down towards this field campsite. We've also got casings on the ground. Okay. Oh, and we've got many bodies up here. You know what? Maybe we'll have a look at them first. And these are just straight up dead humans. They are not infected by the blob. At least I don't believe so. We'll have a quick look through everything that's here and see if there's anything that we want to grab. I mean, not really. Children's shirt. So that's probably a kid. Okay, yeah, no, they don't have anything. Down we go then. Oh, oh boy. Okay. And to the southeast, 
we have Amigo, an alien creature of uncertain origin. Its shapeless pink body bears numerous sets of paired appendages of unknown function and a pair of ribbed, membranous wings, which seem to be quite useless. Its odd, vaguely pyramid-shaped head bristles with numerous wavering antennae, and it moves with an uncanny fluidity on its many legs. Wonderful. Can't see us right now, and that's probably for the best. So that is far to the southeast. We don't really need to go that direction, so we're just going to turn around this way and start to head down here. Just staying at this zoomed out point so we can see everything that's going on. So we can see blood down by those shell casings. Maybe one of them had a gun at some point. Looks like they were probably taken out by the Migo. Oh boy. And to the south of us, we have more blood. Looks like a crash maybe. Yes, these are the two drivers here. However, we can see from the exclamation points next to their corpses, uh, they are probably going to come back to life. A wedding dress. You've got a multi-tool, which is handy. Okay. Well, we'll get close. Let's grab that multi-tool. Just hope it doesn't come back to life right this second. Thank you. And we'll clamber into this car and see what's inside here. Okay. Wrench and whatnot. And a large plastic sheet. Not what we want. And I don't think you had anything for us. No. Okay. Do we pulp them? Maybe just for safety's sake. We're bound to come back this way, so it makes sense for us to do it. None of them have any weapons, though. So, whoever put them down kept on moving. Maybe someone that made it to the refugee center. Or maybe it was the person that we seek right now. Either way, that's an interesting looking sight. I mean, for one, yes, there's a lot of bodies, but there's also a motorcycle. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can get that working. Um, what is the pink marking? It's bile. This bile all over the ground here. Okay, a shrub. I was thinking for a second maybe they ate something poisonous and they just vomited themselves to death. A pair of rollerblades on that one. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, dance shoes, psychoanalysis and colonialism. Interesting. Up here, nothing inside the tents. Okay. Hmm. Nice straw hat. I mean, if we weren't wearing all the stuff that we're wearing right now, we might try and grab it. Graham crackers. Well, you had a phone on you. And a 10 gallon hat. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Still a little unsure as to how they died here. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Fast noodles. <laughs> we'll take them. And we'll take the canned pineapples as well. Oh, too heavy to pick up. Well, that's a shame. But we can just crack them open. Eat on the go. It is always the best method if you can do it. We're feeling hydrated, so that's good. Let's have a look at this bike here and see if it's going. Okay, the security system is damaged. It has gasoline and it has battery. Hot damn. This thing works. It's just going to be a question of whether or not the keys are here and whether we can get it started. Um, let's climb on from this way. Uh, like so. <laughs> there we go, Carmen. That's working just fine. Road mayhem. Ah, okay. I see. And college kids. That's down by the Migos. Okay. All right. Engine's a little bit on the loud side, but that's all right. We can fix that in post. For now, that's our destination. Just up here to the north of us. Now, I'm wondering whether or not we want to try and follow along the road or if we just want a shortcut. The road might be a better option because uh, this isn't an off-road motorcycle. What's our safe top speed that we can get with this? Oh, like high, 111 kilometers. Um, we aren't going to want to go that fast though because I don't know how good Carmen is at driving. Let's see. Vehicles, zero. Okay, she hasn't driven a lot, so we're going to keep things a little bit slower. We're probably going to get the Migos' attention as we drive this way. I'm guessing goes to the college kids. Yep, and that's the Migos, so let's speed up a little bit more. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> um, 
a meteor just slammed into the earth just ahead of Carmen. Hot damn. Okay, well, let's not linger here then. If meteors are dropping from the sky, we're going to continue along this road and we're going to start to slow down a little bit now. It's nice, it's quieter. And we're approaching the airport. No? I mean, maybe. There's a mine here? That's a mine entrance. And we've got a private resort up here as well. Okay. Well, we're seeing a tough zombie, among other things. We're just going to go around the mine for now. I don't think we're going to want to stop for anything. That's around here. That looks like a working vehicle, though. I mean, it's very tempting, but for now, we'll stick with the motorcycle. It's got enough gas to see us to the airport, and that's what we need more than anything right now. And just over here, to the west, is what we're looking for. We've got an acidic zombie. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to joust while we are on this motorcycle. So I'm just going to slow down a little bit here. Let's not go that slow. We're just a little faster than this thing. Oh boy. Ah, uh, yeah, we've got a few of them. I am afraid of being grabbed. Oh, okay, that was some good damage. <laughs> We're just stabbing this acidic zombie with our pike. There we go. It's dead. Got it, Carmen. Tough zombie. Are you going to grab me off the motorcycle? Probably. We'll step up the speed a little bit here. We've got some really good damage on it. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Modern day night. Carmen Moulton. Okay. Oh, that's that's not good. That's 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 bad. Okay, so it's on the motorcycle with us, although it is nearly dead. There we go. Okay, so we don't want that to happen. So let's make sure that we're going with a bit of speed when we turn around here. Okay. This is our angle of attack. Okay, not enough to take it down entirely, but we've definitely got the attention of everything else that's around here. Our target could be among some of these zombies though, right? We got a security guard, the guard. That's the target right there. That's our target, a mad scientist. So we can see that these two are ferals. They're not zombies. Our target, a researcher who stared too long into the abyss and now shambles about, muttering nonsense under their breath. For some reason, the zombies don't seem to mind that this person is still obviously alive. They're clutching a tiny but razor sharp blade in one shaky hand. And then, yeah, we have a security guard here who is guarding our target. The guard still breathes, but has been lost to some terrible madness. They move among the undead, handgun ready, and source of people scanning for threats in a mockery of their former duty. He's got a bloody pistol. We managed to take out the tough zombie, but I am concerned about the pistol. Because one, one good shot could do a significant amount of damage to us. I don't think we're going to get our target separate from that security guard. Oh, he accidentally shot the target. Okay, let's get a little closer. We hit the target. Okay, spinning around. I think we've got a zapper here as well. Yeah. Okay, oh boy. He fired the Beretta, but he missed us. That's good. Well, I was wanting to use our pistol against our target, but I think we might just have to go for it. Frickin' medieval style. And there we go. Driving the pike down into her target. Carmen Moulton has finished her mission, but she's not done just yet. A bullet ricochets off her torso as she drives away, battering the security guard back. We continue to strike as another shot hits, and it hits bad. We spin to the side. Come on, Carmen. Not like this. Her torso is bleeding heavily. He hit something vital. But we hit the security guard. He's down. Striking at the zapper? That's the zapper dead. We're slowly bleeding from our torso. As we continue to strike the tough zombie, we need to stop. We need this thing to die. Come on. A few good strikes there. Not enough to kill it though. 
as yet another zombie appears. Come on. Spinning the bike around and around. Come on, Carmen. We need to siege this torso. That's a zombie down, that's good. Just the tough zombie remaining. There we go. We stop the bike. Let's stop driving. Jumping off. Let's deal with this now. We're going to grab a bandage, apply it to it right away. Okay. <laughs> we need to we need to apply more. There we go. And we stop the bleeding. We're going to immediately disinfect that wound. Thankfully, we don't need to remove a bullet. It looks like it kind of went in and out. Oh, boy. <laughs> carnage. Absolute carnage. And thankfully for us, our target came to us. He heard the sound of the motorcycle. And you know what? Maybe he even recognized the armor. I like to think that he recognized Carmen as that final strike was coming his way. <sighs> Let's start to smash some of these corpses. And we're going to want to make sure that we check out our target. Hot damn. You've got a lot of stuff on you. This was the tough zombie. Lots of letters. You were a, you were a mailman. I see. Okay. And what of you? Ah, the security guard. Oh boy. That's a ballistics vest. Hot damn. I mean, I would, I'd, I'd love to pick that up. At the very least, we need to see what's in it. Oh, the, of course, the ballistics plates. This is fu- oh, 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 I see. Yeah, the magazines as well. M9 combat pistol. We've got six shots. Too heavy to pick up. I disagree with that statement. As much as I would hate to leave our compact lock behind, we, we might have to. Uh, it looks like we can also use the 38 caliber special in the Derringer. Just judging by it being green. Or rather, there is a weapon that can use it nearby. Easy way for us to sort out our weight is just to use the advanced inventory to be able to do that. And yeah, say, sort by weight. Our arming pants are weighing us down. The gambeson, the sleeves and whatnot. We, we also have that cloak as well. Um, as much as I hate to do it, I think we're probably just going to have to leave those pieces behind. That gives us a little bit more in the way of weight. And everything else is just like a slow accumulation of weight, I think. <laughs> the chalice, we don't really need. And I suppose we could eat this three litre jar of pickled fish <laughs> as a celebration. That's a lot of fish actually. Yeah, maybe we'll just eat until we're satisfied there. And let's grab that combat pistol and the magazine. Combat pistol, it's will do. Oh, it's probably this was what can use the 38 special. We'll drop our pike for a moment and let's reload this M9 magazine. Oh no, okay, we don't. <laughs> I stand corrected, but we'll just put that fresh magazine in there. Six shots, that's okay. And we'll put that in our pack. Uh, we do actually have the back of this. We can store some things in the rear of the motorcycle. So I think we're going to want to try and take that whole ballistics vest. Yeah, we'll leave the rest of the stuff there. And we'll just shift that into our vehicle storage. So let's go through the rest of the bodies that are here. Chocolate bars, very nice. That'll give us a big mood boost when we can eat. And it looks like you're just a janitor. You had a high volume rock sack on you though. And a headlamp. Oh, this is the zapper. Right. Okay, let's smash that corpse. Thankfully, with the wooden haft of this pike, it means that uh, we weren't getting shocked when we were striking it. Are you our person? No, you're the zombie. I see. We'll smash that. And it's you up here, isn't it? Yes our target. We are going to take that scalpel, thank you. And interestingly enough, we can use that scalpel and we can use it right now. Although we are seeing a Graken, which we're going to want to be a little cautious of. This is some form of eldritch monstrosity, an uncouth black being with smooth, oily skin and, an, and unpleasant horns that curve inwards towards each other. Tall and thin, the shadows cling unnaturally to its vaguely defined humanoid form as it shuffles along, its hands twitching and spasming so rapidly as to appear a little more than a black blur of claws. Despite the night terror-esque appearance, it doesn't appear aggressive. And that is true. Grackens, for the most part, are going to ignore us. I really don't know what incites them to attack. Okay, 
All right, we are going to drop this pike to the side. And we're going to see if we can butcher this sucker. Well, not, not butcher so much as... Well, I mean, that's kind of what we're going to do. We want to find out how he ticks. And I don't know if we'll actually be able to. Because he certainly seems different than the other infected. Let's find out. Mad scientist, we are going to dissect the corpse. It's going to take 52 minutes for us to do that. We don't know physiology, so it's not going to be uh, a fine surgery here. We will find out something, though. Would you dare desecrate the mortal remains of a fellow human being to learn how to kill better? That is a good question. And maybe, maybe in this instance, she wouldn't, even though this is her target. This is the person she was sent here to kill. Desecration is something entirely different. And Carmen is spiritual, so perhaps there is an element of respect that still needs to be given to the dead, even after they've passed. So you know what? Yeah. We will, at the very least, make sure that he is going to stay dead. Using her knife, she does just that. Ah, interesting. Okay, this could work. We've got a barn just to the southwest of us. If we gather up these bodies, we can dispose of them in a way that Carmen might see or deem to be acceptable. Obviously, this is a lot to drag in the way of bodies, and it's taking time. Now, we're not dragging all of these bodies at once. Effectively, what Carmen is doing is just grabbing one, dragging it, grabbing the next, dragging it, and that's why we're seeing it take a fair amount of time here. Um, we are going to have to leave our pike up there for the moment. We've just spotted a fat zombie, though. Um, yes, let's stop. Where are you? Okay, up there towards the airport. Hmm. Maybe we can set that bush alight. Let's go for that option instead. So it's taken us about 10 minutes to get over here with these bodies. But we're going to be shifting them and everything on them over here onto this bush, including our target, as we're going to be incinerating that. The other bodies that are up there, we're going to have to fight through before we can do anything about them. But right now, we're going to grab our lighter and we're going to set that bush alight. It's going to take a little while to burn, but eventually those bodies should theoretically burn up. Oh, we missed one. Let's get you over here, eh? There we go. Uh, let's just back up just in case there's anything potentially explosive in there. <laughs> and we'll grab that pike. We might as well stay on the motorcycle for now, because it does give us a bit of an edge when it comes to dealing with the... The zombies that are around and I believe the fat zombie shouldn't actually be able to grab us so we'll make our way on over towards it oh we've got some well-dressed ferals up here as well a feral soldier uh okay feral soldier is a bit more concerning to me do you have a weapon sir wearing a military uniform with an armored vest this person seems to be a highly trained military professional now turned feral tense Dirty hands grip a combat knife as their bloodshot eyes scan for threats. Carmen is certainly a threat. Okay, a few good whacks there. So, this is how it's going to go. We are going to be going up towards this group here. And we are going to be trying to just take them out with our pike. As we ride on by, slowly bleeding them out. We've got 3% fuel left at the moment. Which ain't terrible. We're just going to keep them grouped together. To make this a little easier. Coming back around. We're getting a few strikes. We miss, unfortunately. Now, we are doing this with our backpack on. So, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to uh, get this to work. But, we're hitting enough. Spin that bike around, Carmen. Here we go. Back through the lot of them. Ooh, that was a more than a little dangerous. We hit a bush. Okay. I want to make sure that we give her a really decent run-up. Let's go for that soldier. Okay, missed a few. Best thing to do when turning is to just slow down to the slowest speed. That way we can have tighter corners. There we go. Okay. We got a little caught up in there, but we made it through. Really need to make sure that we don't actually run into them because 
they can and will stop our bike. Okay, good strikes. Excellent. Slowly but surely, we are getting through them. Here we go, Carmen. Oh. Feral Soldier, the Collaborator. Okay. So, it looks like he had more guards here then. And we feel guilty about taking down that kid. 2% fuel left, Carmen. Okay. That Feral Soldier needs to go. Oh, some really nice hits there. And it looks like we've got someone hanging along for the ride. A zombie child. Come on, Carmen. There we go. Just some of the tougher ones left now. 1% fuel left. Ooh, this is getting a little dodgy. Good. Here we go. I think the collaborator, the zombie soldier, or rather, not the zombie soldier, the zombie feral, the collaborator, he is down. I don't see him any longer. Okay. And it's just this zombie soldier left. It's just up here towards the north. Come on. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Oh, shoot. Step on the gas. Oh, boy. We actually got held up then for a moment. And there ain't much gas left. How is this thing looking? It's pretty damaged already. That's good. Good strikes, Carmen. There we go. And let's stop this bike. Oh, what a mess. Highway of blood. Damn. There's a feral servant around still. Let's check this soldier. The entrenching tool is definitely useful. You got some compromised ceramic side plates there. And this ballistic vest. You've got another set of ballistic plates down here. And it's an MRE package with a lot of stuff. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> A mountable machine gun. Yeah. M249. Hot damn. And an assault pack as well. Pike, you're staying here for now. We're gonna we're gonna wield this machine gun. And I'm just gonna check to see that we're not missing out on anything else. Uh no, not really. I mean the army helmet and all the rest, those are those are nice, but they would need a bit of extra work done on them okay we're just going to go and check each of these bodies now making sure that they are most certainly going to remain dead ah acid filled okay so what we have to do with the acid filled corpses is make sure that they're not that there's not a pool of acid beneath them and then we just want to go and dismember them there we go making sure that they are not going to come back and cause us trouble three grenades so this is the collaborator here that we took down oh boy um the grenades we definitely want to take some more compromised plates and we've got some stanag magazines here as well some 556 five, you don't okay i was gonna say you don't have a a rifle you do have infrared goggles though <laughs> you got that going for yourself um i think we're probably going to drop off the the baseball bat now we do have the rapier as a melee weapon, as a fallback weapon for us. The baseball bat is going to be weighing us down a fair amount. Still too heavy to pick up, huh? Okay. I think the, the, the Glock has got to go then. Same with the magazine. Yeah, we're still, we're still overweight at the moment. I'm not surprised. There's lots of stuff here. Lots of little things that we don't need to be holding on to. So I'm just going to try and see if we can uh, clear this out a little bit. All right, I'm feeling a little bit better about this. We've had to drop our cloak as well. That's going to allow us to take the grenades, which I really think is worth us taking. And these infrared goggles as well. The canteen, I'm tempted to take because then we can just get rid of our water bottle that we've been lugging around with us. The canteen we can actually wear as well. We'll just make sure that that isn't gonna conflict. Okay, it's conflicting with our rapier at the moment and it would conflict with the sheath if we were to Swap that out, so we'll just take it off for the moment. Yeah, we'd be leaving the Stanek magazines behind. The M249 does use 5.56 rounds, although it uses a specific ammo belt. We might just be able to take the ammunition loose 
too heavy for those five. <laughs> now, obviously, because we're in pain, we have a little less strength. That's what we're lacking. All right, we got our rounds. I am happy with this. So we can start moving on, checking the other bodies, seeing if there is anything that we are going to want from them. And obviously, being aware that we are, you know, quite overweight to begin with here. Now, we are wearing the infrared goggles at the moment. We don't have them turned on right now because I don't think we're going to need to. Not during the day. But if and when we do lose light, they will help us out. Oh, and you know what? Just smashing these bodies here has got our practical and theoretical survival skill up to level one. Nice. Okay, nothing that we want from you. Liquid bandage. That's kind of cool. Unfortunately, we are feeling... Um, I was going to say we were in a bad mood. We're doing better now after eating a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, taking down those kids did not make us feel good. And we can see that our activity is looking a little bit better as well. Got an MP3 player down here. We could actually use an MP3 player to help cheer us up. But in general, I think we're doing okay at the moment. We'll just see what's in the bag. Nothing else that we really need. We're going to take uh, maybe some codeine to go along with our aspirin just to help keep our pain levels down and to give us a little bit more strength. We're on eight strength now, which is good. And we are starting to feel a little bit warm on our hands, I see. Well, I don't really want to take anything off because it's really just the leather gloves. I mean, I guess we could take them off for the moment, but it's still a little dangerous. Sure, we'll just see if we go back down to a comfortable temperature. There we are. With machine gun in hand, we're going to start to make our way up towards the airport now. As we are going to want to be sure that things are clear up here. There was a drug deal going on up the top there. So we had some dead vegetation and then, and then the derelict shed. I can't imagine that there are going to be any planes here. But we can look, can't we? We can look and see. And maybe that's why our target didn't get away. Because there weren't any. It's a fair bit quieter in here. There's lots of things still in those vending machines by the look of things. We've got some aspirin strewn about on the counter. And some root beer. We're already hydrated, so I'm not so concerned about that. Back here, just some reading sunglasses. Okay, not much out here. Back in baggage. And, ah, we're seeing a feral servant and a crick. Looks like they are checking each other out at the moment. The crick is some form of otherworldly hound. Lean and hungry looking, its twisted red flesh is stretched tightly across its misshapen angular frame. Loping grotesquely along, its unusually long neck stretches forwards and its skull-like head as it sniffs out its prey. Its foulness, partially veiled by some arcane force, it seems to almost flicker in and out of your perceptions as if you were looking at it from the corner of your vision. Well, good luck with that, servant. Oh, and actually, that is the servant, as in someone that was accompanying our target. Well, I guess they've got to die as well. <laughs> and then, of course, yeah, an amoebic mold, a formless slime mold the size of a cow. Crusty bits of chitoplasm fall away as it oozes across the ground. I wonder if we can make the shot from here. Like, what, what is our range on this machine gun? Um, that's kind of what we're looking at at the moment. It's pretty decent. There's a lot of, uh, folks over there with the drug deal. Okay. Oh, and that's a, that's a Graken over there as well. Okay. We're going to go prone. I'm going to see if this will actually help us with our aiming here. The servant is nearly dead. And we also want to make sure that we're not on burst fire, which we're on burst at the moment. We want to try and turn it on to, oh, burst is the only option we've got. Well, okay. It's going to be a four round burst. We want to be as precise as possible here. I have no idea how accurate this is going to be. Not at all. <laughs> Not in the slightest. Okay. Well, we'll get a little closer. We're just crawling up towards it at the moment. And we'll see. Precise? I mean, still, the, the chances are great. Oh, yeah. That, that, that'll do it. That'll do it, Carmen. That'll do it. The crick, I don't think, is going to be able to get through this fence. We'll just make sure that they didn't have anything. And there we go. We can see that there is a zombie nearby somewhere. Okay. All to the north of us at the moment. Not our concern. We've got some hangers. There is a small chance there might be something interesting hanging out in those hangers. Let's open them up. 
and we're not really seeing much. Okay, there's, there's lots and lots of crates though, although I think they're all, they're all open, yeah. So if there is anything in them, if we get close to them, it will tell us, but I'm not seeing anything there. We'll check these, just jacks and whatnot, dust masks. Okay, let's open up the next. We hear shuffling, oh, hi. And we have a zombie technician making its way out towards us. So we're just gonna run back for a second here. We're gonna start to steady up and I want careful aim before we do a full round burst into this thing. Um, excessive, I know. Totally excessive. But it does what we need it to. You got a bow saw. Oh, okay. Good for you. I'm not really seeing anything else of worth in there. We should probably have some kind of air protection on at the moment, but we're doing all right. There's lots of fuel, so we would be able to refuel our motorcycle if I had to take a guess. And this might be a control tower that we're approaching at the moment. Trading basics, and there's a radio here as well. Let's head up the stairs. There we go, all the way to the top. We've got a telescoping umbrella, a file on the ground, and some paper. Let's just catch our breath before we head outside. We've got binoculars, so we should be able to see quite a distance from where we are. And oh boy, we can, we, we really can. So to the north of this here, we have light industry. We've also got a desolate barn. We have a shooting range out towards the east there. And then great big craters. Of course, we can see a little bit more of the refugee center that's up towards the west there. And honestly, I think that's the next destination for Carmen. She's completed her goal. She can see something that looks like maybe safety off in the distance. That's what we're gonna to have to shoot for. Um, what are these? They're just fuel storage, I think. Gotta be right. Yeah, so what is what is this? That's gasoline, nice. All gasoline, all gasoline. Okay, well let's go get our bike and let's get it fueled up. We're just gonna drop that in the rear of the bike for now and we're gonna pick up our pike because it's still gonna be the best tool for us while we're on this motorcycle. Let's just hope we can make it. We might be able to drag it, even if it runs out of fuel before we make it to there. Okay. All right, now we just need to carefully line up. Like so. That should do just fine. Stop driving. Okay, use the gas pump, fill the motorcycle. That's a lot of gas. <laughs> That's a lot of gas. Now checking this, 100% gasoline. Hot damn. Okay. All right. So we're going to get rolling. Um, I do want to check. Whoa, let's just slow down here, Carmen. I want to check the rest of the runway just to make sure that there is nothing else here. Nope. No helicopters, no planes. All of the vehicles left. And it seems our uh, target, whatever he was waiting for here, either never arrived or they um, decided to leave without him, which, you know, more power to them. <laughs> let's spin this bike around. Let's get back out onto the main road. All right, now at this point, we are going to take it across the field. Looks like 32 is the fastest that we can go while we're going along the ground, along the grass. Oh boy, that's a lot of turkeys. And what are these? What, what are, oh, 22 casings unused weird that's really bizarre <laughs> well we have made it back to the road and we're just going to continue up towards the north now to what we hope will be some form of salvation up this direction we've got a whole heap of sparrows and the start of the toxic waste dump one of them and we reach an area quite overgrown. But we should be able to navigate through here towards these buildings in the distance. A great big school bus parked outside. Barbed wire fences. We're gonna start to slow this bike down. And we'll park it right here. Turning it off. Let's see if anyone's home. 
Place is well defended. Cracking the door open. Well, would you look at that. Now, you will notice that there probably are some familiar names that are in this space here. The refugee centers do have some static NPCs. And so while this isn't the exact same refugee center from our first tale this season, it could very well be. But for Carmen, we can rest assured with the knowledge that she has made it. Somehow surviving the basement of horrors and coming out the other side, tracking down her target, running her pike through his heart, all in a day's work. Honestly, Carmen was a big eye-opener for me. So much of the early game and Cataclysm has changed recently. And I gotta say, I love how tense things are. I really had to use every little bit of knowledge I had to get Carmen out of there in one piece. Well, mostly one piece. And so it is. Carmen Moulton's tale will be coming to an end for now. And we'll be picking up with the story of another. But don't worry. I know many of you are quite fond of Carmen. I will be wanting to revisit some of these survivors. So, just like with Hilma Baron, I'll be having a vote once we've completed this set of challenges as to who we'd like to see again. But yes, for now, Carmen can take a deep breath, whisper the prayer of thanks, and know that she will live to see another day. Legionnaires, I ask you if you enjoyed this short survival series, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you've enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.